12 days from now, a 33 billion ton interstellar visitor called 3I Atlas will swing past the sun at roughly 80 times the speed of a bullet, and that's where things could turn. Its track runs almost along the solar system's plane, something no random comet should do, forcing the uneasy question, is this a natural drifter or a machine aiming to break at the sun and stop cold inside our system? While Earth's instruments are blinded by daylight, the only certainty will be what comes out on the far side. The real risk is what we won't see when it matters most. 3I Atlas is racing inward near 55 km s, threading a line that defies the odds. Instead of diving in from a steep, arbitrary angle, it skims the ecliptic, tilted only Gakkert 5 degree from the plane where planets orbit. For an interstellar arrival, that's a statistical outlier. Random visitors should come in from all directions, most missing the ecliptic by wide margins. Yet here, the path nearly overlays the planetary lanes as if designed to blend with local traffic. Orbital simulations by planetary scientists show that only a tiny fraction of interstellar objects should arrive like this. The ecliptic covers a narrow slice of the sky. Hitting within Ponchon Fauder years is like throwing a dart at a spinning globe and striking a city street. The last two interstellar objects, Aumumua and Borisov, came in at high inclinations, slicing through at sharp angles. Atlas, by contrast, traces a retrograde arc that moves against the planets, almost flat along the disk. That alignment isn't just trivia. It changes what's possible at perihelion. An approach along the ecliptic meets the sun at a shallow angle, maximizing any maneuver that exploits solar gravity. If a spacecraft designer wanted to use the Oberth effect, timing a burn for maximum speed near the sun to amplify its impact, this is the geometry they'd choose. But the figures alone are eyebrow-raising. Discovered July 1, 2025 by the Atlas Survey in Chile, 3I Atlas is only the third confirmed interstellar object. Its inbound speed, over 200,000 claint kilometer h, proves it isn't bound to the sun. Perihelion falls on October 29, 2025 at 136 astronomical units, just inside Mars's orbit. On paper, it should slingshot past and vanish. Yet the uncanny ecliptic alignment, paired with hyperbolic speed, leaves a lingering doubt, cosmic fluke, or the signature of intent. As the clock runs down to perihelion, the stakes rise. If Atlas is natural, it's rare but explainable. If not, the geometry alone hints at planning and a purpose beyond chance. At perihelion, 3I Atlas will be moving near 68 km s, more than twice the speed of the fastest spacecraft ever launched from Earth. That's the moment when orbital mechanics offer a loophole. The Oberth effect, first described by Hermann Oberth in 1929, says a burn is far more effective at high speed deep in a gravity well. In plain terms, the same engine push changes the orbit, G orbit, much more when you're moving fastest, especially near something massive like the sun. The rule is simple. The change in orbital energy scales with velocity at the burn. Fire a thruster while crawling through deep space, and you get a modest boost. Fire it while whipping past the sun at 68 km s, and the effect multiplies. A 1 km s delta v out there can dramatically rewrite a trajectory. For 3i Atlas, the theoretical capture path would require deceleration, a retrograde burn at closest approach. To shed enough speed to switch from a hyperbolic escape, to a bound solar orbit. Estimates show that dropping into a permanent orbit near 136 AU would demand losing roughly 20 km s at perihelion. That's enormous. Even with efficient chemical or nuclear options, propellant needs would approach the object's mass. And yet, the Oberth window is the only way such a maneuver is even remotely plausible with known tech. Natural comets do vent jets that nudge their paths but those forces are weak, chaotic, and rarely aligned with orbital needs. They move speeds by meters per second, not tens of kilometers. A controlled, precisely timed retrograde burn would stand out, 
post-conjunction tracking would show a clear step-like drop in outbound speed, far beyond what outgassing can do. That's why the perihelion window matters. If 3i Atlas slows down, solar gravity turns a modest push into a major transformation. The mechanics are straightforward. The energy stakes are huge. What remains is to watch for any sign that nature, or something else, can and will use them. From mid-October through early November 2025, 3i Atlas disappears behind the sun from Earth's view. That's not bad luck, it's baked into observing rules. When a target falls within the 30 degree of the sun, major ground telescopes must look away. Solar avoidance isn't just about glare. It's a safety protocol in hardware and software. The blackout, from October 22 to November 7, means that while 3i Atlas screams through perihelion, no direct images or spectra come from Earth. Space telescopes face similar constraints. Hubble and JWST never point within 5085 of the sun, killing any last-minute look. Even TESS is locked out by solar elongation rules. Parker Solar Probe and Solar Orbiter are pointed sunward, instruments tuned for plasma and fields, not faint moving targets at their edges. Mars orbiters, briefly better placed, tried risky snapshots in early October, but the object was 50,000 times dimmer than their usual scenes, and preliminary frames from the ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter were flagged by ESA as likely noise. No confirmed detections have been released. For now, absence is the only certainty. A multi-week span when any dramatic change, natural or otherwise, can unfold unobserved. When it reappears near dawn in November, astronomers will be reconstructing the story after the fact. Brightness is supposed to be a proxy for mass. For 3i Atlas, that assumption is wobbling. Photometric readings calibrated to standard comet reflectivity put the mass near 33 billion tons, making it one of the heaviest natural visitors in recent memory. Yet after the October 3rd Mars flyby at 0.29 million tall water kilometers, dynamics teams heard silence. A body that large should have nudged Mars's orbit, or at least shown as a tiny anomaly in orbiter navigation data. Instead, MRO and ES's trace gas orbiter saw no measurable perturbation. Deep space network tracking showed nothing above noise. It's not just missed signals. In 2014, Comet Sighting Spring's much closer pass left a detectable fingerprint on Mars's trajectory, even though it was smaller and lighter than Atlas is supposed to be here. With a mass estimate orders of magnitude higher, the effect is missing. Teams cross checked orbital solutions hunting for unexplained drift in Mars's motion or timing residuals. Same answer. No tug, no residuals, no evidence for a massive solid core. Some argue the mass is overestimated. Brightness inflated by dust or an unusually reflective surface. Others point to a hollow or highly porous structure, a shell, not a stone. The spin rate inferred from brightness variations hints at a rotation faster than a solid body of this size should allow. For now, the numbers refuse to meet. Bright, fast-spinning, negligible gravity. An equation that points toward a hollow shell, whether assembled by nature or not. Spectroscopists watching 3D Atlas in mid-September measured a coma stretching 180,000 twilers kilometers, an envelope dwarfing the nucleus. Dominant molecule hydrogen cyanide Vented at 4 pounds values 10, 25 molecules per second, roughly 2 kilos of HCN every second. High by comet standards, but not unprecedented. The sheer size of the coma and steady cyanide output point to active outgassing from ancient ices. As Atlas nears the inner system, jets of vapor and dust stream outward, shaped by radiation pressure and solar wind, building an asymmetric halo that signals motion and volatility. The chemistry is more than a curiosity. It's the baseline for a natural comet pre-perihelion. HCN, alongside traces of water and carbon monoxide, keeps Atlas in familiar territory for solar system comets. Spectral fingerprints match prior interstellar visitors, though ratios and intensities hint at a unique formation story. 
For now, coma behavior supports a natural reed, a porous, volatile, rich body shedding mass as it warms. That baseline, captured before the critical solar encounter, becomes the yardstick for post-perihelion change. If composition shifts, or if the coma fragments strangely, those deviations will stand out against the September record. A hollow shell hurtling toward the sun is more than a physics riddle. It has testable consequences. Picture a structure made not to endure, but to deploy. At perihelion, when gravity and light are fiercest, a fragile body could fragment naturally, scattering debris at random. But there's another option. One scientist like Aviv insists on keeping on the table. Intentional deployment. If 3i Atlas is engineered, perihelion is the moment to act. Instead of chaotic breakup, a shell could release smaller units, probes or sensors, each on its own track like dandelion seeds in a gust. The evidence would be concrete. After perihelion, observers would look for discrete, non-random trails radiating from the original path, some fragments accelerating or steering away from the sun, not drifting passively. Patterns in the debris, straight lines, sudden speed changes, clusters moving as if under control, would stand out against natural chaos. Lowe's Galileo project is preparing exactly that test. The checklist is clear. Track every outbound fragment, measure velocities, compare with natural breakup models. If it's random, the engineered idea fades. If the sky shows order, the implications are profound. The days after perihelion will decide which story the evidence supports. ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter, built to scan Mars, was pressed into service as 3i Atlas swept past in early October. The team swung the high-resolution camera off-planet into the black, taking a string of five-second exposures at the technical limit. The target was 50,000x dimmer than intended design. Raw frames looked like digital static. In most, the supposed comet was indistinguishable from noise. Processing pipelines tuned for crisp Martian terrain struggled to extract a reliable signal. ESA analysts flagged the preliminary images as likely noise, not confident enough to claim even a faint detection. Constraints didn't stop there. Mars orbiters downlink in tight windows, competing with other priorities in bandwidth. Each image batch passes calibration, compression, and review before public release. With the target so close to the sun from Earth's vantage, there was no way to cross-check against ground observations. By the time any processed data appears, slated for late November, weeks will have passed since perihelion. In that gap, any sudden change in Atlas's path or structure could go unrecorded. For analysts, every ambiguous pixel is a warning. The critical moment may be hidden in the noise and the only clues could arrive too late. A body from interstellar space captured by the sun would rewrite planetary science. For researchers, it's the first permanent sample of extrasolar material, an object to study for generations. For defense planners, it's less abstract. Internal memos at NASA and the U.S. Space Force during the blackout window outlined contingency models. If an engineered object used a perihelion burn to shed velocity, surveillance protocols would escalate. No public guidance or threat assessments have been released, but the existence of drafts, even redacted, signals a shift in how such arrivals are modeled. One headline about capture or probe deployment could ripple far beyond science. Yet speculation doesn't rule, evidence does. To judge extraordinary claims, observers need a checklist. First, watch for a sudden drop in outbound velocity, an abrupt change in astrometric residuals that outgassing cannot explain. Next, look for organized debris, discrete tracks, fragments accelerating in non-random directions, not the spray of natural breakup. Cross-reference with atmospheric anomaly logs, especially UAP-like reports, synchronized to perihelion. The data to watch, public optical and radar observations from ground and space, polarization studies, and citizen science occultation campaigns in the Southern Hemisphere. Archive channels from NASA, 
ESA, CNSA, and the Galileo Project will release recovery images, trajectory solutions, and raw sensor data in November and December. Falsifiability is the rule. If the outbound path shows no step change, fragments drift randomly, and no correlated anomalies appear, the story returns to nature. The test isn't what's possible, it's what the data confirm. On October 29, 2020, Marisa 3i Atlas reaches perihelion at 136 AU, verified by Atlas survey logs and NASA trajectory data. Its near ecliptic and de Gorales approach is statistically rare for interstellar objects, as orbital models confirm. Although photometry estimates 33 billion tons, the October 30th SARS Mars flyby produced no detectable gravitational effect an inconsistency noted in ESA and NASA navigation records. Imaging gaps during the superior conjunction blackout are documented in observing schedules, leaving a critical window unobserved. To date, no classified defense or market advisories have been released about potential capture or artificial origin. Whether 3I Atlas is a porous comet or something engineered, only post-perihelion debris patterns and velocity changes expected in late November datasets, will answer. As of now, the evidence highlights both the limits of observation and the exceptional nature of 3i Atlas. Its next move will be a matter of record, not speculation. In Cosmos, we trust.